either what the latest research is. Former NFL player Rolf Bonerska looks as comfortable in a hospital setting as he did on the football field. Raised in Hanover, in the shadow of Dartmouth College, most of his childhood memories revolve around sports. Sneaking into hockey games to watch Dartmouth play and kicking footballs back and soccer balls back to the college kids. Rolf Bonerska has an opportunity to kick the San Diego Chargers into the AFC Championship game. Drafted by the NFL in 1977, Bonerska went on to become a place kicker for the San Diego Chargers. But at age 23, a little-known intestinal illness would change the course of his life. I came down with what was originally diagnosed as Crohn's disease. Later, he would discover it was ulcerative colitis. Both conditions are chronic and part of inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, where the immune system goes haywire, attacking parts of the intestines, causing inflammation. I'm a kicker, and essentially I have a stomach ache with diarrhea. And so I kept my head down and tried to live through it. And by the end of my sort of four years of dealing with this, I would have four major abdominal surgeries. I would end up wearing two ostomy bags, and I would really be very lucky to, to live. Rolf thought his career was over, but he started training and seven months later earned his job back. I have two bags on my side. Nobody's ever played a professional sport with an ostomy. I didn't know if I could kick and the bags would stay on. Rolf went on to play seven more years, setting 16 team records before retiring in 1987. He says his condition may have been life-changing, but not life-stopping. It's not talked about. It's kind of the classic closet illness. So most of us think when we're told we're going to have to wear a bag for the rest of our lives, that our lives are going to be have, to have to be lived within this confined box. You know, can't travel, can't swing, you know, can't play athletics. Uh, you know, intimate relationships are probably out the door. And what I discovered was that none of that was true. Just what causes inflammatory bowel disease is unclear, but the environment, diet, and genetics may play a role in triggering this serious condition. It's more common than people think. Dr. Corey Siegel says more than 1.2 million people in the U.S. suffer from IBD. Today we don't have a cure for IBD. I think this is the goal of researchers all over the world is understanding number one, why do people really get inflammatory bowel disease? And once they get it, can we make it go away. Are you seeing right. Thank you. Struggling with severe symptoms from ulcerative colitis and hitting a stone wall with medications. Hey, Reggie. Dr. Siegel, how are you? Reggie Caldwell of Belmont was now forced to consider surgery. And when we talk about surgery for ulcerative colitis, we mean specifically to take out the entire colon. It was a very big tough time. Yes, it was. Big decision to make. Knowing he was facing a tough decision, Dr. Siegel called on Rolf for an assist. I used to see him on TV once in a while. And I thought it would be an honor to talk to him. I had the privilege of talking to Reggie when he's at this junction in his life. You know, what do I do? And I, can, I, can, I said, look, I know what it's like. It gives you a very positive attitude to know that somebody can play a sport like he played with this disease and obviously with the colostomy and, and, and still function. I'm thinking, my God, if he can do that, I guess I can do most anything, can I? For Reggie, it was the motivation he needed to go ahead with the surgery. I'm back to work. I'm doing anything I want to do now. Eat whatever I want. It's, I have my life back. As for Rolf, his goal is to change the perception of ostomy surgery. Instead of living a restricted life, the truth is that we can literally do anything. If I had a dollar for every patient I heard say, I'd rather die live with an ostomy, I'd be a wealthy man. But they don't know. How could they know? The only way they can know is to hear from another patient. Hey, Britt. Hi, Dr. Siegel. How are you doing? Unlike Reggie, who got his symptoms late in life, 25-year-old Brittany Quimby of Pennacook fits the usual profile of an IBD sufferer. She was diagnosed with Crohn's disease at 15. I've been in the hospital uh, most of my life, just in and out with treatments, and I, I, was, I couldn't do sports when I was younger. Um, I'd never had the energy. I was always sick, and I... Missed out on a lot of stuff growing up. Tell me about work. It's going well. I still get a little stressed out. Brittany's had a difficult course of Crohn's disease. She's been on most of the medications that we have available for Crohn's disease. She's even been through uh, discussions about some experimental agents. And despite that, uh, her inflammation in, in the bowel has just continued to persist and, and really been unrelenting. 
Dr. Siegel and Brittany have decided to try a new drug used to treat psoriasis. We turn to a drug called ustekinumab, which is an experimental drug that's used to treat patients with Crohn's disease. November will make two years that I've been on it, and it, I've done a 180. Before I started taking the Stellara, I had a feeding tube in my arm for a year because I wasn't, I wasn't able to gain any weight. I couldn't eat anything. And I'm just pleased to say that it's been a dramatic difference in our life since we started. With IBD, not only is finding the right medication crucial, but so is finding the right doctor to help you go the distance. Good for you. Still, few things have more impact than hearing from someone who's walked in your shoes. When you hear Brittany's story and now Reggie's, their stories are powerful. Patients get hope from those kinds of stories. Hope's an incredibly powerful force. Hope comes from somebody that's been there. At a recent IBD symposium at Dartmouth-Hitchcock, the former pro football player would share his story of hope. I don't want to kick it wide left. I'd like to uh, leave you with some uh, hopefully encouraging uh, insights into living with inflammatory bowel disease. Much has been learned since Rolf Bernerska was diagnosed 30 years ago, especially in the field of genetics. Now we've identified over 160 genes that play an important role in not only developing inflammatory bowel disease, but also how severe inflammatory bowel disease might behave over the course of their illness. With all the medical advances, doctors now say those newly diagnosed with IBD have much more hope when it comes to new treatments. I think the advances that we've made over the past 10 years and what I anticipate will be exponential advances over the next 10 or 15 years, I think is gonna bring us closer and closer to a cure. What Rolf Benershka might liken to being on the goal line, poised to hit a game-winning kick. We'll try.